What's up guys, this is Ray and welcome to Asian Filmist and we're here to talk about the 2018 Japanese film Blank 13 directed by Saito Takumi in his directorial debut and here he brings to us a cast led by Takahashi Issei, Lily Frankie and Saito Takumi himself. And this is a movie I believe was initially released last year in 2017 maybe via film festivals but I know it got its domestic release in 2018 so that's why we're talking about it today. Blank 13, it's a very small story and it's supposedly based on a true series of events. I'm not sure how accurate its depiction of these events are, but I guess it was enough to make for an intriguing story. And definitely, I think the premise was interesting. Uh, it's about these two brothers, Koji and Yoshiyuki, and their father disappears one day, uh, 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 assumingly to escape from debt collectors. And 13, 13 years later, the father resurfaces, but he has terminal cancer and they learn he's being held at a hospital. So ultimately, the father dies and Koji and Yoshiyuki, you know, they don't, they, they, there's this 13 years uh, that are missing from their relationship between them and their dad. But it was it's at the funeral service of their dad that they start to really learn who their father is via testimony of the attendees. So as far as the positives are concerned with Blank 13, uh, the characters. I, I enjoy the characters and their struggles. It definitely seemed very grounded and very realistic. You know, I think that's to be expected because this is based on a true story. But I, I definitely felt that these characters were connectable in every way possible. And uh, even you, you get flash. The story takes place uh, within uh, during multiple time periods you know you have your present day you ha uh, when when uh, they're at the funeral service you have a little bit beforehand where they're kind of reconnecting with their dad and then you have their childhood and the story focuses on Koji who's the younger brother and he's played by Takahashi Issei and when you see Koji as a child uh, playing with dad playing catch with uh, with dad when they're younger you definitely feel a, a genuine parental bond and you get and I think when uh, when dad finally uh, finally walks away from the family you can't help but feel heartbroken it is definitely a heartbreaking moment and part of the drama part of the strength of the drama is that is when Koji confronts his dad 13 years later and you know he's confronted with uh, with think with the feeling of whether he still has that kind of affection for his dad or whether he hates his dad because of what he's done and Lily Frankie as a dad you know I love Lily Frankie as an actor granted I don't think his characters change much character uh, from movie to movie uh, you know, they all have you know Lily Frankie has this, has a distinct personality that he brings that he brings with him to each of his roles and you definitely feel that and because of that I felt that he had an interesting take on just being a scumbag dad and I think uh, his character is, in a, is a good example of a sympathetic flawed character and the reason why is because you see what he does to be a scumbag dad, he walks away from his family, but at the same time, you can't help but feel sorry for him because of what he's done during the 13 years he's been absent for the family. And I felt the way the this movie was laid out was very interesting. This is actually, oh, I mean, of course it's going to be separated into two halves, but the the title screen doesn't actually come in until halfway, like literally halfway into the movie. The first half is kind of building up to the relationship between the boys and their dad. And the second half is the testimonies uh, from the attendees at the dad's funeral. And I thought that, you know, I thought that setup was quite interesting. And the reason for that is because you spend the entire half of the story before uh, the introduction of the story kind of building up this hate towards the dad alongside the brothers. But then you kind of, uh, in the second half, you're you get introduced to all these characters and their testimonies and you get, start to question that hate for that. And of course, you, you hate him for what he did. Uh, he did a pretty scumbag move uh, probably to just escape from these dead collectors. But at the same time, the stories and testimonies from these from these characters that you meet, they're all interesting. And, you know, for the most part, they're very entertaining. They're very enjoyable to listen to. And some of these stories are quite, you know, genuinely hilarious. And I think part of the reason is because some of the, the, the people they got to cast the cast as these performers you know first of all you have sato jiro in this mix i think sato jiro you can't not be funny i think he's just one of the funniest actors uh for me whenever i see him and he, he always just like lily frankie he has 
the same kind of mannerisms uh, in each of the roles he plays. And I just can't help but laugh. Even if the movie or setting is dramatic, there's something about it that always makes me laugh. And that's definitely the case uh, in this movie. And because of these lovable and entertaining characters and their testimonies, it, you get kind of confronted with the question, you know, man, is it really wrong to hate the dad? I mean, like, do I really hate the dad? Uh, you know, I think the brothers, they also get confronted with this question. And to see the brothers react to that, I thought was definitely interesting. As far as the negatives with Blank 13, I thought, you know, as much as I was entertained with the second half of this movie, I thought it was definitely jarring, especially when you compare it uh, to the first half of the movie and trying to see how the overall movie is trying to be. Uh, you know, the first half, it's building up to be this very dramatic story uh, about uh, about a broken family. And then you get to the second half, and it ends up being very lighthearted, genuinely funny and hilarious, and, you know, full of very cute and awkward comedic moments. And I don't know how to feel. I, for me, it was a bit jarring. As much as I was entertained by it, it felt very jarring. And also the testimonies given by each of these uh, these guest characters at the funeral. It was just like they told very interesting stories. I would have loved to hear more. These are the kind of stories that if you were to sit down at a bar, you listen to you listen to a person next to you just chat away, telling a story of how they did this with this other person. These uh, it's the same kind of feeling. But I think I would have loved to see uh, their stories actually getting acted out uh, in the context of this movie. For the most part, we don't see any of these stories get acted out. We just we just hear it through their words. And uh, the characters, when they tell their testimonies and the way they give it, that's, the, that's what holds entertainment value. But I think for the most part, it would have been nice to see these stories get played out. So that I think would have added definitely to, uh, to connecting more with the dad. Uh, you know, and overall, this movie was a short movie. It's about 70 minutes long. And it definitely had a lot more room. It definitely had a lot uh, of freedom to be longer to include some of these stories get acted out and because these testimonies were only given via words uh, as far as what we see it you know it, it made the impact their impact on the brothers hearts uh, not as believable. I think if you, if we were to see these moments get acted out, uh, with, by the performers and then we see the, the brothers react to it, it would have been, it would have been, uh, it would have been more believable. Oh, but overall, what did I think of Blank 13? You know, it, it was an enjoyable movie, but it's a quick watch. And I thought it would have been definitely nice to have this movie longer with more fleshed out details, but it definitely wasn't a waste of time. And even though the tone is jarring, I thought it's quirkiness, you know, the more I think of it, it's definitely part of the appeal. You know, especially in the beginning, uh, you know, when you get introduced to the funeral ceremony of the dad. His last name is, what was it? I think it was like Matsuda or something, which is a very uh, common name in Japan. And, you know, the, the temple that where the, 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 the funeral service is being held, right next door is, a, is another funeral service of a different family, but with the same family last name, if that makes any sense. And because that's more like further in the back of the of these grounds a lot of the a lot of attendees come to the funeral of the dad you know they pay they pay their respects but then they realize they're in the wrong place so they have to go to the other one uh, the uh, the other funeral service and it makes for these kind of embarrassing and awkward exchange exchanges between characters you know it was i think it was quirky, it was funny, and I think it was planting its comedic seeds right then. And this movie definitely had a few questions posed as you know, as part of the theme of the story. You know, I think the biggest one is: is it really can can one be forgiven for abandoning their family despite doing a bunch of other deeds uh, during their absence from their family? A lot of these deeds, which uh, are redeeming qualities in the character. You know, it's, it definitely is a hard choice. And I think if anyone else was confront, confronted with this kind of struggle, it definitely would be just difficult to overcome. And it was definitely enjoyable seeing how the brothers react uh, to this, to these questions. And, you know, I definitely recommend watching this movie. This, de uh, this movie is short and it, not a whole lot of stuff happens in this movie as far as, uh, 
uh, as far as the events that are portrayed, but I think it was definitely an enjoyable and entertaining watch. But yes, those are my thoughts on Blank 13. What do you guys think? Please let me know in the comment section below. If you enjoyed this video, please leave a like, and if you are new to my channel, please subscribe. And if you really dig my content, please know you can subscribe, you can support Asian Films via Patreon from as little as one dollar. And hey guys, please join our Discord server so you can uh, so you can connect with fellow fans of Asian cinema. And yes, that's about it for me, guys. And as always, everyone, thank you so much for watching, and hope to see you all again in the next video. Take it easy.